Hi everybody, a very warm welcome back to the Mexic Garage and we are continuing on Poirot, getting the bodywork sorted out. As you can see, got my LED light set up down here and we need to sort out um, filler work, priming, stone chipping and painting. I'm gonna try and get this side complete if I can. Um, and then obviously we can wax oil it on this side, put all the rubber bungs and the trims back on and then we can flip it round and start on the other side. <laughs> now remember we've still got that wing to repair on the other side as well, the bottom half of that wing where it's all gone rotten and obviously you saw the other side is already in primer as far as the repair I've just done but we need to get that stone chipped as well to make sure obviously it's all protected and looks the same and everything else. So we've got a fair bit to do, let's uh, carry on and get some work done. Well, yeah, as you would have seen from that bit of time lapse there, I've rubbed down the original layer of filler I put on and added some more in the areas under here that I didn't uh, put on before and I've also gone slightly higher here to try and blend that in a bit more. Um, it needed a little bit more in this curve just to make it nice and smooth because I've got it lovely and smooth along this bit but this bit was too low so I've done that again that's now drying. What I'm looking at now is, I know for a fact, sorry bars on the screen, Hang on a second, let's put that down there. I know for a fact that this has had this black section painted before, not particularly well, and I think they've gone slightly too high, um, which has been proven because I've just used some thinners, and as you can see there, obviously this section here is back down to the original where it should be, and you can see the little gap between the silver and the black where they've masked just above the original line. I know it's only a little silly thing, but to my mind it, it looks a bit weird so I'm gonna go along here with some thinners and just go along that edge and get that edge back to the original which then get, makes it smooth then as well because at the moment it's got a ridge there where they've masked over the top of it and just obviously gone over the top of it so I'm gonna do that again get that back to original and then we can uh, obviously when we get to that stage of when we stone chip this once it's all rubbed down we can then redo the black all the way along including the wing that I replaced the bottom section of about two years ago. It's lasted all right to be fair, it's not one rusty so that's good but I never ended up doing the black because I knew that this wasn't quite right and I knew I was going to have to do something with this seal with this side so um, I waited until uh, I was doing it, all, doing it all in one go so I'm going to go along, work my way along there, it's going to take a while so I won't bother filming it because obviously it's a bit boring and that's another little job ticked off the list. Let's carry on. 
Okay, I've rubbed down that second coat of filler. I'm actually on the third little skim now. Put a very, very, very fine skim over this bit just because it has some pinholes in it. Need a little bit more on that edge and a little bit more on that corner there. So not too much. A little bit underneath as well, where I hadn't gone back quite far enough. I've also gone right along this seal with the thinners, as I said, and I've also gone along it with the DA now and sanded it all back so it's all nice and smooth now, ready to have a new coat of uh, paint on there. And I've also started prepping the bottom of that front wing. Now the bottom of that front wing, if you remember, before I said that I used the Gravity Guard or Gravitex and the stone chip effect, you can see it in the reflection there, is quite a lot more severe than the bottom of the door. So I think what I'm going to do is mask that section off and I'm actually going to do what I've done here and sand it with a DA so that there's still a slight bit of dimpling but nothing like what it's got at the moment and hopefully that'll make it look better I'm going to have to just repaint that lower section silver so that's the plan with that I think I'm going to do that while I'm here it's been bugging me for ages um, I thought oh, I'll leave it you know but no I'm, I've got to do it <laughs> it's getting on my nerves so I'm going to go over that with a DA get that a bit smoother so it's still got a little bit of a bumpy effect to it same as this but not much and uh, hopefully that will look a bit better then let's carry on okay as you can see there now I've got that lower wing sanded back obviously it still looks dimply but it's nowhere near as much as what it was I'm hoping when you get a nice coat of uh, paint over that again that will smooth it out a little bit more because obviously it will fill in any little dips it's really uh, a lot better as you see you can see the high spots where the stone chip was um, in comparison to the silver that's left on there um, so it shows you how, how dimply it was so hopefully that will look a lot better I've left it thick or I've left the coarser stuff thicker around this edge and obviously underneath because that does give it a little bit more protection so we can now get that uh, all cleaned up and get a coat of silver on that and then obviously a coat of lacquer as well I'll probably wait until I've finished all the dusty work first because otherwise I'm going to get it covered in rubbish so um, I'm waiting for the sealer to dry on this end I've done this just got a bit of bars on the screen let me just turn the light around hang on because otherwise it'll get bars on it stay there light right you can see down there now I've finished off sanding that last thing I've also put some sealer I've washed some sealer in there with some panel wipe and I've also put some sealer under here leaving the gaps for the two drain holes obviously um, so that's uh, all under there that's all drying with a heater on it as you can see there so this side is basically all prepped to go now uh, I need to pop out and get some uh, primer just to cover the filler and the bare metal areas then we can stone chip it uh, obviously the black part of the seal and this bit and then well, I won't need, won't need to stone chip that front wing because obviously it's already been done with the Gravitex um, we call it Gravitex or Gravity Guard, it is Gravitex, yeah, Gravitex so uh, that won't need doing again obviously because I've just sanded that back so it's a bit finer um, so yeah, we are progressing well let's carry on right here as you can see there now I've given that bottom of that wing three coats of silver and now I need to lacquer it um, just to give it the shine back on there the textured finish is a hell of a lot better than it was it's a lot smoother um, before it was really really bumpy and rough so um, I don't know if you can really see it at the moment because I haven't got the lacquer on there to, to reflect the the sort of uh, bobbly effect but it is not too bad it's pretty good so uh, I'm going to get some lacquer on there and then carry on with the seal lovely jubbly let's carry on Okay, as you would have seen from that bit of time lapse there, I've now got the rear section in primer as well, and I've just given that a little flat back, um, just to obviously get it as smooth as possible. 
it probably won't make much difference because we're putting stone chip over it anyway but I'm now going to get all this masked up all the way along and then we can get it stone chipped all the way along get that re uh, covered I'm not going to I don't think I'm going to stone chip the front wing area because obviously I've just flatted that back to make it smoother so I don't want to then put more texture on it so I'm going to leave that without any stone chip on it we'll stone chip this area along here and then we'll go right the way along with satin black which is how it would have been originally and uh, that should look nice and tidy hopefully so let's get all this masked up and then we'll carry on from there Here we go, I changed my mind again. <laughs> Did the bottom of the wing as well, I thought, in for a penny. So that is one coat on there now of stone chip. Um, it's actually a, quite a nice texture, it's just about right. It's not too strong. Um, you can probably see it, hang on a second. You look at that bit there, on the, on the reflection there, you can see it's quite a, a reasonable texture. So we'll see how that dries and um, if it needs another coat, then we'll give it another coat. But looking at it, it looks quite good. I may give it one more coat just for a bit of extra protection. And then we can, once that's gone off, we need to obviously paint this back half up here silver again. Then let that go off, mask that up, and then do the black. Because um, obviously, going over black with silver is going to be, it's going to be hard enough going over this grey. I might even go over this section with light grey primer again, just to... Um, obviously make it easier for the silver to cover um, <clears throat> but obviously I needed a stone chip up to here because of the filler work that we did here um, and obviously making it match again with the stone chip effect so yeah that's the plan um, we'll carry on from there and uh, see how we get on I guess let's carry on okay as you can see there now the stone chip has gone off on the seals all dry so I've moved the masking tape up and I've painted the rear silver section now that's not lacquered yet that is just a base coat on there and i've tried to fade it up as best i can obviously just so that it's not a complete line of color i think you're probably going to see a bit of a color difference silver is the worst color for trying to blend in but do my best so we'll get some lacquer on it now and see what it looks like once it's lacquered let's carry on right here, as you can see there now that's had a couple of coats of lacquer on that and it's come out pretty well i'm quite happy with it actually the texture is pretty good, matches in fairly well. Um, the colour obviously fades up. I don't know what it's going to look like compared to the rest of the car yet because obviously I haven't unmasked it, but that's going to be the next step. I'm going to unmask it because I want to remask this line that I've put along here. I'll obviously run it all the way through now so we can then do the black on the seals and we will have a continuously straight line all the way along. That's the plan anyway because um, I don't want to obviously uh, have any steps or any bits of not straight in it or whatever because it would look funny so I'm going to get that um, unmasked that square this bit here I might try and um, run it on from that bit of tape as it's already there and it's in the right place and just run it up a bit further so obviously I can match it in but then then again I may do the whole thing I don't know yet <laughs> anyway I'm going to um, make a decision on that and uh, we'll carry on going and get this still painted in black let's carry on Okay, another little job we've got to do on this, um, while I'm waiting for a, a coat of paint to dry, is this uh, arch liner trim, little section that's got to go back in. It goes like that, and sits in that corner there. 
However, obviously because we've done some weld on it, we are missing the bottom hole in the panel. So I've got to drill that. And then before it would have had a, a little nut welded on the back of it, obviously to give it a thread, but I haven't done that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a riv nut in there, um, which we've got here. One of those. So we need to drill a hole. I've marked it up already. It's got to go about there. Um, I'm gonna get that drilled and I'm gonna get some of that cold zinc galve spray, which is this stuff here on a cotton bud and just go around the edge of the hole to obviously give it something over the top to stop it rusting and then we can put the rib nut in and then we can get the trim on let's carry on okay as you can see there now i've got the hole drilled and that is the right size for this rib nut to go in now if you don't know what a rib nut is it's basically a rivet with a thread in the middle and you use a tool like this one um, which that threads on to there like that a second there we go thread that on there like that and then you can put that in the hole there now, the only issue i've got is there's not a lot of room in between <laughs> the wheel and the arch i'm hoping this is going to work so you basically just squeeze it together like that and then you can open it up and wind it in a little bit more if you want it in there tighter just to give you a little bit more on the, on the uh, rivet nut a second like that and that allows you to just squeeze it up the last little bit then and you get a feel for it it's yeah that's that's tight enough and that is it and then you wind it back out again with the little screw thing on the end here and that is your rivet nut installed into the wheel arch now i'm going to absolutely cover the back of this with wax oil so hopefully it won't rust now i've drilled a hole in my nicely freshly painted thing there we go that's it one rivet nut in there so that now will line up with the well hopefully line up with the hole in the in the plastic trim and we can get that bolted in but i'm not going to bolt it in just yet because i want to finish doing the black on the wheel arch here first on the seal and obviously i don't want to get any paint over it that may uh, just flick past or whatever so um i'll just show you i've done a little bit of more paint work on this actually inside the shut because it's gone in there with a bit of stone chip and made it all go black obviously with the stone chip so i've just painted inside that corner there that's all dry now um i'm going to leave it a little bit longer just to uh, let it go hard before i put any masking tape over it and then we can get all this remasked up again and get the seal all painted in black sat in black lovely jubbly let's carry on okay we're all completely masked back up again now and we are ready to lay the satin black on i've given this a little um flat back with a bit of fine 240 paper just to obviously key that back up again because that little bit there had lacquer on from when i painted the silver the rest of it's all stone chips so that's still got a key on it anyway um yeah so we're going to get uh this set up get some satin black on it we're probably going to do two coats of satin black and i'm going to put one coat of satin lacquer on it as well just to give it a little bit of extra protection because obviously being right at the bottom it gets everything off the road and i don't want the black chipping off so i'm going to put a coat of satin lacquer over it as well just to uh obviously give it a nice sheen but not be too shiny because the original wasn't mega shiny and it'll give it a bit of protection as well let's crack on Radio, as you can see there now the seal is all nice and painted in black that is just the paint on there at the moment two coats of satin black now you could leave it like that but I want to say I want to put some satin lacquer over it just to uh, give it a little bit of extra protection so what I'm going to do I'm going to take this masking line off so that it's not got a, an edge on it anymore and I'm going to put a soft edge along that um, top of that black with a masking tape and by a soft edge I mean um, folding the tape over 
on the edge so that it's not stuck down all the way to the edge. So when I lacquer it, it will actually overlap the silver very slightly and hopefully seal that edge in to um, stop it ever chipping off, hopefully. That's the idea. So that is what I'm hopefully gonna do. Um, I'll show you what I've done when I've done it. <laughs> Come back to you in a minute. Right, okay, as you can see, I've got a fresh masking tape line along there now. Now this doesn't have to be as accurate because obviously, as you can see, as I said by the soft edge, this edge is folded over and is floating. So when you paint the lacquer, it allows just a little tiny bit to go underneath that edge. And obviously then that will just overlap the edge of the silver, not by a lot, because obviously we're using satin lacquer, so I don't want to go over the silver too much, because otherwise it will make the uh, silver look satin as well. So just literally want to, like, it's, you're talking like a mil, maybe two mil max, just to um, give that edge a little bit of extra protection. Now, I probably don't need to do that, but I'm belt and braces, so <laughs> I like to do it as best I can. So we get some lacquer on there and let that go off and then paintwork on this side is done. Woohoo! Well, I, I don't like to blow my own trumpet. <laughs> I'm quite chuffed with that. <laughs> I really am, it looks really good. And that is factory, how it would have come out with a black along the sill like that. So I don't think I've done it just to cover things up because that is proper. Um, the grain, the texture on this wing is a lot better than it was. It looks nice and smooth now. It's not exactly the same as the original, but it's not bad. Obviously the door's as it should be. And this is the I don't want to get any bars on the screen. Hang on a second, let me turn the light around a bit now. So that is the the pit we welded in. And I'm I'm chuffed with that. I think that looks good. Considering what they looked like before. Oh, hit me head. I'm uh, pleased with that. And obviously we've gone around, oh, let me just do a bit of paper up there, look. We've gone around the side there, down the bottom with the black as well, so it matches in. You can see our riv nut we put in there earlier. So now we can get that arch trim put in which I showed you earlier on and we can absolutely fill this side up with wax oil as much as we can to hopefully protect it inside that quarter panel for years to come so I'm pretty chuffed with that I, I it's come out better than I thought if I'm honest lovely jubbly let's carry on radio this is what we've got for wax oil I've got a few cans of this knocking about it's good stuff it's quite thin, which means obviously it will run everywhere. So if you can't get the sort of nozzle in to right where you need it, you can do it sort of higher up and it will run down to where you want it to be. Now I've got this long nozzle, as you can see, which goes onto the top of a spray can. And it's got like a uh, sort of uh, three pronged um, jet on the end of it effectively. So it sprays out in all different directions. Um, so that is gonna go, obviously I wanna put that inside the holes of the, where I've, mainly in that drain plug, uh, that bung hole in the arch, which is the big hole around here, in there. You can get into there nice and easy. And also on the back, underneath here, there is the um, drain for the so, uh, for the roof drain. And we can see that. <coughs> you can see up there the roof drain. Nope, you can't see it, because it's too dark. Anyway, we saw it before. I'm gonna go in at the side of that pipe as well because I can get around it where I've took the rubber bung out and absolutely fill it full of wax oil. So I wanna get that done and then we can get that arch trim back in. Let's carry on. As you can see there now, there's a mess all over the floor, which means that it's all full of wax oil. Because <laughs> if it's draining out like that, then there should be enough in there to hopefully keep that all protected inside. That's the theory anyway. <laughs> so that is good. Right, now that's uh, done. I'm gonna get the arch trim, or get that rubber bung put in the arch get the arch trim back on and then we can we need to bleed the front brake on this side which I've got a new tool for as you can see there Sealy pneumatic brake bleeder so I can connect it up to the airline and that will pull the uh, brake fluid through from the uh, caliper end so we get that bled then we can get it turned around and start again on the other side 
let's carry on okay that arch trim is now in the bung behind it is in and the bung on the back where the drain pipe for the roof is now in so that's all good and I'm just going to start now this is the CD brake bleeder I've got and it links up to your uh, air compressor it's got a trigger on it there that's what pulls the vacuum and basically all you have to do is put that on the end of the bleed nipple obviously crack it open make sure that your fluid in your reservoir is topped up and suck it through so this is going to be the first time I've used this so it should be uh, interesting shouldn't take too long hopefully um, let me um, get you set up on a tripod and we'll see what it goes like so you can see it happen come back to you in a second Radio. get our uh, leader here <clears throat> obviously you want to make sure you keep checking the fluid on this that basically just pushes on the end of the bleed nipple I'll put the spanner on there first so I can open it and close it which way is that going to open look that way. right okay yep push that on the end Like that open him up in theory should suck the fluid through if I wait for the fluid there we go look when you stop getting bubbles in the pipe then you know you're off lead See the bubbles going through this pipe here at the moment. Quite a lot of air in it. Just wondering whether it's because I've not got the bleed nipple open quite enough. Let's open it a little bit more. the bubble still to show you how much air is in there I have to stop the fluid up again in a minute now I'm still getting some air bubbles in this pipe so I don't know if that's just the, the vacuum of it making the air bubbles or there's still air in the system so I'm going to try the pedal and uh, see what it feels like take this pipe off and then you can suck the fluid through. Get it like that. Make sure that's tight. I mean that should be. I've, I've put like nearly two two uh, reservoirs through that, so it should be shouldn't have any air in it at all. Um, let's just top that fluid up a little bit. Okay, I guess we'll uh, move it out and see what the brakes feel like. Let's carry on. Right, yeah, I'm doing two more things on this side before I turn it round. Um, as you can see, I've got the lip of the arch further around masked up, and I'm just just buzzed that back with a little bit of sandpaper because it has some flaky paint around it, um, and just giving that a little coat of uh, stone chip and a coat of silver on that lip under there. So I'm just waiting for that to dry off, so I can just put a little bit of lacquer on there. Uh, front wheel is back on. Can see there I've also wax oiled underneath the front there now as well you can see the drips on the floor where we did that repair at the front here and there's another thing which we need to do which is change out this fuse now when I was doing something under here before I can't remember exactly what it was I shot the tank out and blew the fuse um, and just to get me out of a fix temporarily I actually soldered it back together <laughs> it's that one in the middle there so that's been sold back together so obviously I didn't want to leave it like that so I've got a new one to go in there um, but you actually have to unbolt the little fuse box to get this out because this one you see it's got holes in it it actually bolts in 
because it's a main fuse. So there's two 10 mils here, which you have to do to get this out. And then obviously there's a little, I think there's either one or two little 10 mils for this uh, fuse in the middle here. So I'll get this lifted out and I'll show you how it fixes in underneath. Right, just to clarify, I knew there was a reason why you had to take the fuse box right out, as you would have seen that time lapse. There is a bolt both sides, so you have to flick this little door open, and there's a bolt in that side as well. So one in each side on each terminal makes sense. Obviously, the other one in there, as I showed you before. So that is now all in there, lovely jubbly. So we can get that bolted back down. It's just two nuts, as I said before. You can see them in there. I'll get that bolted back down, and that is another little job off the list. Lovely jubbly. Let's carry on. Right here, as you can see there now, we've got the MX-5 turn around in the garage, so we're now on the passenger side again. And the first order of business is to get this front wing off, um, because obviously we need to make a repair panel for the bottom there. Um, and it's obviously gonna be a lot easier to make something up um, off the car as such. And obviously then we can shape it a little bit when it's on the car again, but I need to get all what's, all what's gone manky behind cleaned up as well. So, got two 10 mils under there which are thankfully here on this side because the other side when I took it apart when I very first got the car it had actually been ground flat and welded over so I had to uh, look great fun getting those out this side's okay I've got to take this little splash shield out in here there's a bolt in the top of the wing here I think one halfway down as well and you've got a row of 10 mils along the top here and I think probably I think it's two bolts that go into the bumper and we should be able to get the wing off without taking the bumper off, hopefully. That's my hope. I think I did it before that way. So I'll uh, get this off and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right here, as you can see there now, the wing is off. Um, just to confirm where the fixings were, there's one at the top, one in the middle there. There are four 10 mils along the top, one there, and there's three in a row here. There's one at the very front in there, which is a bit fiddly to get to with the bumper on, but I managed to just loosen the bumper and get that out. And then there are two which go into um, these mounting holes here. And they have a fixing plate on them, which is this bit here. Now these always rot out, but I did actually replace these with brand new ones. These, you can see the rust on it already. Look, that was brand new about a year ago. It shows you they don't last very long. Um, but anyway. That's there, so that's that's all off. Now the wing, as you can see, I've got it on resting up here. <laughs> that's what we're left with as far as uh, rust. So I'm hoping I'm going to get this ground back. And I'm hoping I can keep this below this curve because when I had to do the other side, I had to make this curve, and that was the trickiest part: getting this curve and then that shape, which actually goes away from the curve. And then obviously you've got the curve around here as well. So I'm hoping. That this area here is all going to clean up all right because obviously this bit's quite difficult to make and i just want to be able to make it from say here and then across and then i'll have to kick up at the corner there because there's a bit of rust in that corner unless that cleans up which i don't think it will so i might have to just go up to that corner there it'll be okay to make that little bit but to make that curve all the way along is quite tricky so that's where we're at with that um on the bottom of the wing now um you can see it is a little bit rusty let me just grab a hammer. I'm hoping I haven't hit this before, but it is. It's got flaky rust on it, but as you can see, it is solid. So I'm going to get that, get that cleaned up with a flat wheel on a grinder, and we'll get some rust treatment on that to get that all looking good. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this seal uh, buzzed back with the DA, as far as all the black paint, the same as I did the other side because I can get this in stone chip whilst I'm working on the wing. So hopefully it may speed the process up a little bit if I can get coats of paint and stuff on in between making the panel up for this wing. So that's the plan. Let's crack on and get some done.
there we go that's all cleaned up that's uh, probably been saved just in time I'd say because uh, if it left that much longer I think that probably would have started uh, going right through but it's still uh, still strong at the moment it's a pretty lumpy bit of steel that bit because obviously it's the main structure of the car so we're going to get some rust converter on that now um, let that obviously dry maybe give it a couple of coats and while I'm waiting for that I'm going to buzz all this back let's carry on Okay, as you would have seen from that bit of time lapse there, the seal is now all buzzed back with uh, what grit did I use? 80 grit and then 240. It's lovely and smooth now. The rust converter on the end there has done its thing and is now all gone black, so that is ready to paint over. I've had a little fan heater on it, so that just to give that a bit of a bake off. No, uh, nothing to do with the uh, TV show. <laughs> uh, I've buzzed the primer back on there and I've masked up the door and just up to that bit on the quarter panel just so we can get some stone chip on here so that's going to be the next step i want to get a nice coat of stone chip on and we'll go from there let's carry on Okay, while that coat of uh, stone chips drying, I need to turn my attention to this wing. Now you can see here, I've buzzed it all back with a combination of a wire wheel in the grinder, then the flap disc in the grinder, and then VA, just to obviously see where the good metal and bad metal is. Now it's obviously where the bad metal is, <laughs> it's not there anymore. <laughs> but it uh, looks like we're gonna hopefully get away with what I said, which is to be able to cut down here so we'll have to put a small curb in the panel we make there, which isn't too much of an issue, hopefully. So we'll cut up here, um, may even go on a diagonal. That bit there is pretty strong. I haven't cleaned up under there properly. But anyway, we'll go along here and we can keep it below the black line um, most of the way along. And then it just kicks up to that little section there, which we need to cut out. So we'll obviously have a little diagonal going across here, as I said. Um, so now I need to... Uh, find a suitable bit of metal to make something up with because I'm not sure what I've got left at the moment I'm running out of metal so um, I'm gonna have a little rummage around see what I can find and go from there let's crack on Right, as you would have seen there, I've got that section now cut out of that wing and it's laying on the floor over there and I've drawn it on to the old Puma wing. I knew this would come in handy. This is the best bit of metal I've got, although it's got a bit of a cur curve in it. It doesn't matter too much because obviously 
that wing's got a curb in it too. So I'm hoping I've sort of flat, semi-flattened that out, drawn, drawn around it. I'm gonna cut outside the lines, cut that out and see what sort of uh, fitment we get with it. And go from there with uh, obviously fettling it until it's good enough to weld in. Let's carry on. Right, with that bit cut out, you can see there now the shape that I'm trying to go with. And the reason I've done it this shape, obviously we know why this bit is, because it's diagonal across the rust to get rid of that bit. But this bit I've done diagonal to keep this swage line as much as possible, because this bit under here is all clean metal. Um, sorry, let's move you uh, in a bit so you can see. All this piece here, you can see it's got a swage line running down it, so it's got, gives me something to follow. So I've got that piece obviously made up to that. I now need to start bending it um, to make it obviously fit the shape of this wing rather than the curve of the Puma wing. Um, but that is a good place to start. So probably going to take me a, a fair while to try and uh, fettle this in. So I'm going to faff around, get this uh, hopefully bent around where it needs to go and uh, I'll come back to you when I've made a bit more progress. See you in a minute. Right here, we just jump back in to the garage quickly um, and you can see there what I've done is I've moved the masking tape line up and I've left the feathered edge on here now this is not going to be all silver this is going to be just so I can get this little lower section of silver in there and try and flick it up so that it blends into the old silver and then once that's dry we can then lacquer up to this line so I've scotched this all up so it's got a key to it mask that up I've scotched all this edge, so hopefully this is nice and smooth so that it will fade into it. Um, and yeah, so I'm just gonna get a bit of silver on here. Obviously in the area that we want it. And we'll take a couple of coats because obviously it's going over stone chips. So it will take a couple of goes, but we just want to try and keep it local into that area and then just sort of flick it up so that it hopefully will blend into the other silver. I don't want to go too thick with it to start with so I'll leave it at that for a minute. I'm going to do probably another um, two or three, well probably two or three coats like that I would have thought and then we should be ready for hopefully some black paint along here once it's lacquered. Well, we lacquer it obviously first and get some black paint along here. Right then, that is going to be it for this episode of Mech Tech. We have uh, had a lot of progress on Poirot and it is nearly getting there now. We are, we've got the, the end of the tunnel in sight. So um, I'm going to leave it there because obviously it is quite a long video, this one I think. Um, we've uh, obviously covered quite a few different points and I don't want to rush making that panel for that wing. Um, so I'm going to spend some time getting that as best I can as far as the shape. Um, I won't bore you uh, with me bending a piece of metal for hours on end. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll leave it for now. Obviously carry on with it in the next episode. I have also been working on the Ninja in between doing bits on this. So I've had a little bit more progress on the Ninja as well. So hopefully we'll have another video on that fairly soon. Um, if you do like what you see, Obviously make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up on the video. I would very much appreciate that because it does obviously help me out with YouTube as far as they see who's viewing my videos and who's enjoying what and whatever else. So that's good. Um, I have got Instagram mech underscore tech 1985 and I have got a Facebook page mech dash tech as well. So you'll be able to see little photos of what I'm doing during the week and all that sort of thing. And all that is left for me to say is thank you very much for watching. And I will see you again next time. Join me soon for more automotive adventures. Cheers, guys.